Welcome back chemistry enthusiasts to day four of our IUPAC nomenclature journey. So far, we've covered the basics of naming organic compounds and explored naming with functional groups. Today, we're stepping up our game to tackle even more complex organic molecules. Get ready to become an IUPAC naming pro. Before we delve into today's advanced material, let's quickly review what we've learned so far. We've covered the importance of systematic naming, the role of IUPAC, and how to name alkenes, alkenes, alkynes, and compounds with functional groups. Make sure you have a solid grasp of these concepts. Today, we'll kick things off by discussing alkyl halides, which are compounds containing a halogen, F, seal, bar, I, attached to a carbon atom. Here's how to name them. Let's practice with chloroethane, which has a two-carbon chain and a chlorine atom. What's the IUPAC name for chloroethane? Scene script. Ethers consist of two organic groups connected by an oxygen atom, ROR, when naming ethers. Now, let's name diethyl ether, which has two ethyl groups connected by an oxygen atom. Can you provide its IUPAC name? Scene script. Esters have a carbonyl group, C equals sign O, where one of the oxygens is connected to an alkyl or aryl group. To name esters, let's try naming ethyl butanoate, which has an ethyl group and is derived from butanoic acid. What's its IUPAC name? Amides contain a carbonyl group C equals sign O with a nitrogen atom bonded to the carbon. To name amides now, let's name n acetamide which contains an ethyl group and is derived from acetic acid. What's its IUPAC name? It's your turn to practice. Try naming compounds like bromobutane, methylpropyl ether, isopentyl acetate, and phenylacetamide. As you tackle more complex compounds, be sure to avoid common pitfalls such as misnumbering carbon chains and misidentifying functional groups. Take your time. Great job today. You've learned how to name complex organic compounds including alkyl halides, ethers, esters, and amides. Keep practicing and stay tuned for our next class, where we'll explore even more advanced naming scenarios and tackle real-world examples. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.